Well, welcome sales associates, those budding to move into the realm of sales professionalism. Welcome to Prospector School online. This is where we talk to you about getting a foothold into a market or indeed reinvigorating a new market. So we're now up to, goodness me, it's a uh, foothold session 118, which of course uh, we have titled, oops, I should say 119, really gone the whole hog. So 11919 in this one. And today we're going to talk in part about regeneration. We're going to recap. So I'm going to take you back to the last few weeks because all of these have a very strong correlation with the essence of what we're trying to do here to eventually get to a state where you are regenerating listings off of listings. Now, some of you might be on here going, well, I'm struggling to get some of the first ones to start with. That's okay. Don't let that concern you. Uh, the subject matter that we're going to cover today is more about how we get you on that straight and narrow and moved toward the recreation of listings as you go. So it's all done with the right, with the, with the same things in mind. And hopefully, you know, if you've been listening to this over previous weeks and as we're seeing most of the, the, the markets occurring, so finally this hair will be removed because I'm told that about this time next week, the restrictions of lockdown where I'm located up here in New South Wales have been lifted. I know that they're also easing down in the southern states, Victoria, namely. South Australia's had it pretty good. We've got on with us here today, uh, John. So good to, good to have you on board. And to people, John, uh, John Roby, or yeah, sorry, Andrew, I should say, Andrew Roby, that we are doing some work with down there. He's starting to see a freeing up and traction working well. And I hope that Michael McDonald and members of his team down there in South Australia on board as well, paying attention to this. Obviously, Queensland's had it pretty good, got some great results, just got off uh, a one-on-one, -on -one, a PC3M meeting with uh, Sophia Tui up there who works directly with Justin Hicks, one of our more recent real estate rock stars, but now a, a sales team leader in his own right. And they've had some tremendous results. I mean, just this week end and last weekend, three open for inspections, got results off that, moved into another three that we're having uh, this week and another three listings going on and on the back of four open for inspections the week before and sales being made and we're getting and seeing lots of leverage off that. So this week, which I'll talk about as we go through, we've got Sophia on two those new listings and introducing them through and how we set it up. So you've got continuity of meeting sellers, active property sellers, researching the market and moving through and creating that leverage and continuity. So just to recap on where we started with this all the way back to session 16, I spoke about orientation. I'm not going to dwell on that. You just need to go back to that recording, which is now, four weeks ago or a month ago, uh, the orientation that we had there, we made it very, very clear that when you are running any form of prospecting, the name of the game is qualification first. So of course, if you're actually following up on uh, your SEL, your sales inquiry log, and you're going back into past inquiry, you just need to, first of all, give them the head around selling and whether or not they're qualified. So the way that we do this, Again, it won't take me long to put this in play. We're actually harvesting inquiry that is at least four weeks old to as long as 12, 12 weeks old. This is the ideal window when they're most receptive to the idea of uh, a listing presentation and talking or engaging an agent. So I basically calling back and I'll just say, hi, my name's Mark Dwyer. I'm from ABC Real Estate, wherever it is. And then I go on to state the nature of the inquiry. I sorry to bother you. Look, you had an inquiry. Goodness me. 
it was back in early or late September of this year, early September, I should say. Um, have you purchased as yet? I can't really hear the answer. I wait till they stop talking and I just say, do you have something to sell? And if you're looking on here, you'll know that I'm nodding the head. That gets the, the, the positive affirmation. Whether they say yes or no doesn't really matter. If they say yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Or if they go on and say words to the effect of, look, we would sell, but we need to find something to buy first. Don't panic. I just know the qualification's done. I then move to identifying seller or buyer and straight on to the motive. So were you inquiring about this property as one to buy or were you looking at it in comparison to your own? And then they go, yes. I say, well, so you're moving from here or where are you moving from if they say no? And then I just focus on where are you moving from? Where are you make, looking, to, looking to move to? So this is what we talked about in orientation, ensuring that the discussions are motive centric. And what you're looking for is the opportunity to then offer advice. So next week, we start to talk about a whole new realm on that and how you actually position yourself to get advice around that, which would be a continuity or a flow on from what we've discussed here today. But I just wanted to recap this so that we know how it works. And then you move in to product. Following that, the week after we started to talk about, this is an F117, we talked about connection. And this is basically about making that connection with them. Now, I, there's a bit of an add-on to this that I'll just discuss here briefly now, but I say that everyone that you encounter in the real estate business, that you want to look at it almost as though you've got what I refer to as an emotional bank account. If you consider, and I don't want to delve into this too much about the example, but if you consider, if you were prospecting and you came across a friend, and you were running that prospecting and they said to you, yes, we are looking to sell, but we need to find something first. And you knew for sure that there are dangers. That's it, since there's a whole lot of pitfalls with that, how would you speak to them? And I talk about this in terms of authenticity. Just because you're a real estate agent doesn't mean you need to adopt a whole new persona. Be who you are. You are what you is. You is what you am. A cow don't make ham, as I say. So. In, just be yourself, be relaxed about being yourself. And what I look at with every person is how can I make deposits in what I refer to there as refer to as their emotional bank account to build up that personable relationship, not personal, but it needs, still needs to be personable in that we are advising them around life's matters and just engage them in good conversation where you are freely offering advice without any hooks in there about getting something in return. And then we talked about on that, also coupling this with the searching, searching or looking to uncover or more to the point, discover their emotional dominant reason for selling. So going a little bit beyond the where are you coming from and where are you looking to go to and digging down through those layers of what is initially presented to you, as I refer to, as the superfluous motive. This is when a seller says, well, look, this is where we're looking at moving or going to, and they just give you that initial reason. We're looking to buy a bigger house, for argument's sake. Or we're looking to move closer into the city. But then as you start to dig through those layers, so we get that first answer, then we start to ask why, why would you want to do that? So some people might say, well, the kids have gotten older now and they're moving, you know, we don't need as big a house as we've got now. Okay, then why do you want to move? I mean, surely you like it around here. Well, I always wanted to move back in toward the city and said I would do so as soon as the kids started to fly the coop. Why, why, why? And you don't do this all at once. This is over a number of weeks. Then all of a sudden the answer might come out. I swore to myself that when I moved and the kids were older, that I would get back to the lifestyle I had when I was younger. And that meant being 
on the city, in the city, where I could just get across to whatever restaurant, whatever place, whatever it is that I wanted to do. There's the emotional dominant reason. And you can then count on the fact that the personable relationship is being developed and it won't be far or not that long before they might then to start to surrender to you more of what the motive is about, but importantly, then start to ask for your advice. And this is where the opportunities come into play. And then the third component around that motive is quite simply when. When do you plan to have this done by? When do you want to do this by? You need to lock into that because if you've got somebody who's got a motive, they know what or where they're trying to go and do, precisely why they're trying to do it, and when it has to be done for done by, I can tell you comfortably that you have not just an active property seller, you have encountered or you are speaking to a walking, talking commission check, really, that it's going to convert to that at some stage. And as crazy as it sounds, this will come your way the less onerous you make it about the conversations that you are having. So the orientation needs to be centric to the motive. And in building that rapport and making those deposits inside that emotional bank account and in them feeling more comfortable with divulging this information, you need to keep the conversation. So this is where we talked you know, more about the connection. And I basically said, make sure that you keep or restrict the conversation as we've already said to that motive, from that motive, then move it across centric again to the property itself. And then last, but by no means least, about the client. Refrain as often as you possibly can about engaging around conversation on your own interests, even if they're similar to the person that you're talking to, let them do the talking. The more you listen and the less you talk, the better the rapport you're going to build moving forward. And the whole aim around all of this is for you to engage in conversations. And I'll get back to that in a second. But if you are taking notes, your primary aim should be to have good five, good, meaningful conversations with potential or prospective sellers almost on a daily basis. I can tell you that the best estate agents look at that as a minimum. And you can almost certainly bank on your productivity being improved and being better the more conversations that you are having with great regularity. All right, from there, we then move to, we move to last week's session 118, I started to talk about service. And this is absolutely critical. Once we've, number one, qualified, we've identified the motive, we've made our orientation, our discussion centric to that motive, we then need to, and we've, we're starting to make a connection and we know the mode that we're following, we then need to move into what I refer to as a service orientation. I spoke at length about this last week. And I'm going to give it even more credence right now when I openly say to you, first and foremost, please, if you are taking notes around this, really center in on it. I know that many of you are working in direct support as a sales associate to a sales professional, or in some cases in our real estate rock stars, a peak performance professional. And you have to I guess, deliver the opportunities. You have to deliver the appointments, the listing presentations. And I say that you need to be keeping or you need to build to a point that you have as a barest of minimums, 25 active property sellers, meaning property owners that have become active, they have a motive, they are researching the market ahead of getting their property on, now, they'll be at varying stages, but that list should comprise a minimum of 25 people that you've identified that might be coming on in the next three to six months. Now, the reason I extend that, because I usually look only at those that are around three months, but with the advent of COVID, with the advent of lockdowns and everything else, 
that can be protracted out. And a lot of people might be articulating it around the six month mark or greater than three and up to about six months. But indeed, you can halve that, especially as we start to see things lift. People will change. The dynamic of their motive will change as restrictions lift. And they will be very much inclined by invitation to get down the agents agencies, sales associates, whoever's been doing the prospecting of those that have been keeping up the communication flow, not necessarily just directly, as we said, you can overdo that, but they're keeping up the service because they are sending out on a regular basis what I call passive communication. So you want to get that list up. You want to be absolutely certain with that list that you can clearly point and you have at least established, even if it is the superficial motive and through your discussions, you're working on digging down to know more about that motive, more about what they're trying to do, more about where they're coming from than discussions purely related to price. And that connection to that, that, that connection, yeah, is enhanced, especially with communication if you've got lots of passive stuff going out to them in the field. So we said, first and foremost, your property sellers research guide, because this is basically the foundation and the basis of your product that you're putting out to them. Now, I know that if many of you are just looking at this for the first time, and you're saying, what's a property sellers research guide? It can be very similar to what you maybe be uh, your, your, what used to be called a pre-listing kit. But of course, if that pre-listing kit is devoid of demonstrating your product, I would be concerned about that. A property seller's research guide makes it very clear as to the products, the services that you offer that the seller can't do for themselves. In our instance, it has very specific information around price and how it works, the difference between comparative value and market value making it clear that comparative value is not much more than a subjective opinion and it will differ and they don't receive that anyway. What they will receive is market value. And this, there are, there are value variables that can drive the price up or drive it down. The ones that you can drive up as an estate agent are effectively built around good sound marketing, communication, and indeed negotiation. So your abilities, or if you're working directly with a sales professional, the sales professional's professional capacity as a marketer, a negotiator, and a communicator is where the value, what we refer to the value proposition keeps in. So you need to get that out to them. Then you need to automatically put them onto an SMS router where you are sending texts out to them twice a week, no more than 72 hours apart. Sorry, no less than 72 hours apart. So at least every three days, so effectively twice a week, where you are sending them in real time messages that pertain to the fact that you've just sold property. So Sophia, uh, uh, Sophia Tui, who's up there working with Justin Hicks, those were properties that went unconditional this week that were sold last weekend, they've represented two texts that go immediately to the active property seller list. Now, if you look at it from their point of view, this is conclusive evidence that properties are still transacting. I make a note here, even though if you jump onto listedsell.com.au, there's a whole range under a whole bunch of categories and there is a category for price, record price and that sort of stuff. But I make it very clear as best you can to steer away from those texts and send texts out that have instead a direct correlation to motive for, for the obvious reasons, the reasons I've already, I've already discussed, or if not around motive, maybe about your professionalism, uh, again, about timing. Timing's a, a fantastic one, especially given that that's a, a huge issue at the moment, that that can be uh, also one that's a, a problem. Is a, Oh, I just saw someone had a hand up. I don't know what that, that was a, an issue. So that's another one that can be, can be put out there. So you want to make sure that those are going out. 
All right. Uh, so lots of texts going in. Now, looking at this from the perspective of that active property seller, all of a sudden I've got a PSRG. I'm already regularly receiving texts. Then the next document that we want to send out is a comparative market analysis. Now, in most real estate businesses and in different market environments, the comparative market analysis is something that comes out basically at the listing presentation. And whilst I'm not saying that this is not an issue, I think that you can send it out. We're very keen to see this go out now, mainly because there is some procrastination about getting properties on the market, notwithstanding the fact that a lot of people are already, they're ready to do it, but they just think that the market's not permitting them to make this move. So if you're sending this stuff out, it can create a great platform for further discussion, but more importantly, also opportunity for, if not you, the sales professional you're working with or in tandem with, to then get on the phone and start to give them some good, solid advice, mainly about how to go about the entire process. So we want to send that out to, to spark some interest and it's good, solid information. So we have a letter that goes out with that. It's available for those of you that are on any of our products, PC3M, Sales Trainer Mentor, or your, or, your, your, or your companies involved. Give me a call. I can get that to you straight away. You can be generating these reports to people that sit on your APS list. Uh, uh, as I just said, uh, um, comparative market analysis, and then shooting this out. I'll just give you a quick insight as to what this correspondence looks like. And I'll just drop it up on the screen so we can have a look at it. There's been a couple of, there's one little change I made to it. So it basically says, obviously this is being sent by email. Hey there, property researcher. What is my property worth? That's to be put up into the subject line as well. And the only change is the one that we just put right here at the front. We'll put their first names. So John, Mary, as I or we may have mentioned, there are two ways of looking at the value of your property. And I thought you might like some preliminary information on recent market activity to perhaps allow you to estimate the comparable value. This is the estimated worth of a property when compared with others recently sold in similar location, accommodation, and to a degree, presentation. A reminder that this is merely a subjective opinion and ignores the also essential value variables that can enhance the value of your property. It's important to remember that to a home buyer, no two properties are the same. This draft report, however, is a good starting point and we are happy to share this with you. Then what will my property sell for? Well, market value is what a property actually sells for. And this can be above or below the comparable estimation. And this can only be determined by taking the property to market. There are several factors that affect the value of the property, both positively and negatively, that this report does not take into account. We influence the value positively through enhanced perception of property via imaginative marketing, along with upward implied value established by professional negotiation. So we're making that clear. Of course, skill communication contributes to value. If you'd like to discuss any aspect of the report, feel free to call anytime. Your property is worth more with us. Enjoy your day. So I have Stuart Hatfield down there uh, in Victoria in the local market. He's uh, with Ange Serralis. They've got this out to a bunch of people. We'll keep you posted on that as it works. If you'd like to jump on board with this, just give us a call. Obviously, you could pick it up from there. The one that we will send you will also have some highlighted uh, points that also need to be emphasised in that cover letter that goes. It's essential that the cover letter does go, that you don't just send the report out. It is a preliminary report. And the whole idea is to create service and to push up the number of people that, uh, that you are communicating with. All right, so you get that all in play. The next one, of course, is, whoops, a daisy, just gotta get this. So then we're also then moving into your accolades, making sure that they're going out. If, if you don't have accolades inside the company, get hold of some, talk to a sales team leader, get some support 
you need to be pushing that out. And you, and if you use through our property marketer uh, system and you're shooting those out and sharing them with people, this is absolutely imperative. Always remember, if you say you're good, this is not nearly as good as someone else saying it about you. So again, if you're working hand in hand with the sales professional and you're actually doing the prospecting for them, even sending their accolades out, which can come directly from you. And if you do want to give me a call, I can give you the words that you can use when talking about that sales professional that you're working with, with any active property seller, whereby you can pre-sell them moving forward. And that's important as well. Then we talked about getting some sort of marketing, giving them an idea of the marketing that you've got, and especially if you've got something like the two view platform, this is where you can have an individual property website. Again, Stuart Hatfield uses this with alarming success, shooting it out, saying to uh, prospective sellers, if you jump on board with this, this is an adjunct, you get this for no cost to you whatsoever. And it allows us to engage and connect with buyers. Of course, they were doing that despite lockdown and being able to engage and again, project that out there into the marketplace. Big one is that if you do have success, and this is one of the ones that we did again, with uh, Stuart Hatfield and Ange Sterellis. So we've got, they have managed to list and sell properties. So sell to a buyer where the buyer's not even been to the house through the lockdown stage, and then indeed run an online presentation and list their property for sale, having never met these people. Of course, we turned that into a case study and fed that out to our incumbent or active property sellers in a prospecting mode, demonstrating to them that the market can still, we can still take advantage of the market, we can still get you moved, despite the fact that you might be feeling that there's a disadvantage out there with all of the lockdown constraints. So it's important that you're putting all these, especially if you're in an environment where there is an issue or there's some contention around selling marketing or you know with the rise of these off-market uh, listings. If you can show that there, there was also a marketing product involved and it, it is, was an integral part of that successful result, it makes it easy for incumbent sellers to buy. And then last, but by no means least, we're also specifically sending them out by name, buyers that we have, that should their property come to market, that we'll be able to engage them. So some of these are even being sold or, 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 or the connections being made through the TwoView platform that I mentioned just a second ago. Now, I want you to actually look at this from the perspective of the active property seller. You've made a connection with them. You haven't pushed for that appraisal. You haven't pushed for that presentation by solicitation, which can be off-putting for some of them, especially if they've indicated to you that they're not ready to do anything until they find something to buy. But despite this, they've immediately received a property seller's research guide, which talks about things other than price and is very clearly demonstrative of the service that you offer. The SMS texts are coming through. They're seeing evidence of properties being transacted and sales being made and people being moved. You've sent them a comparative market analysis with that cover letter, making them aware and, and, and creating some cause for some exchange or some conversation around what is happening in and around that. You've also sent, sorry, I didn't mention the market roundup, which is showing them evidence of what's going on inside the market and keeping them in, in the loop. Then there's been strong evidence of recommendations and or testimonials and in form of what we call our accolades. So you're sending those out to them as well. Then they're getting uh, the, the two view platform. So again, they're seeing even further evidence of the marketing that they can receive and how you're making connections with buyers, even if you're in a state of lockdown or otherwise case studies are also being sent to them and of course there's evidence of buyers so there's no real question of them sitting there 
thinking, oh, they're going to ask me to pay or give money to find buyers through advertising. So you've made that strong dissemination. So if you look at it from their point of view, there's every reason to engage with conversation, and especially if your conversation has been centric to their property, to the motive, and indeed to the client themselves, the relationships building over this period of time is, and invariably they're going to look around and ask for some advice. This then presents the opportunity if you're working with a sales professional to get them in. And sooner or later, they're going to say, what do you think we should do in this situation? And that indeed then becomes your opportunity where you've just been given a listing presentation by invitation rather than solicitation. So this is all important. Now, before we go, I just wanted to talk about some other things that I did talk about regeneration. And it's most important that you're focused upon this. When you or any member of your team, even if it's something that you're getting in foothold, so if it's something that you've run where you've run, say, Fat Boy, and you've tried to secure a property on a main arterial road, Again, you've now afforded the opportunities to run open for inspections. Of course, if the owner will let you do that, or you've gotten a bona fide listing in and around that market, then the job turns to, yeah, and it's important that you understand this. So very early for some of you in your real estate career, your attitude has to be one of leverage. The moment that you win a listing, whether you're part of a team, where you're working as a Rio with a sales professional, the moment they get a listing, you need to be thinking almost straight away regeneration. How do I leverage off this listing into hopefully at the front end two more? So many estate agents, when they're looking at leverage, when a listing comes in, they wait or they're keen or all their attention turns to getting that property on the market and selling it. And then once they've sold it, they try to use the kudos around that to then leverage into listings. Now I'll go one step further. Some of them, they get so excited by the fact that they've sold it and so engrossed in the relationship they've formed with the people. They turn up at, you know, uh, for a drink or, or they might even with the buyer want to go to the housewarming or otherwise, whatever it is, but they don't, focus on leverage until they need more listings or worse they run that series where they get a bunch sell them then they've kind of depleted and then now they start thinking about leveraging off listings if you want continuity you have to focus from the beginning on this it is so important that you understand the moment you get a listing the opportune time to get another is the moment you've just gotten one as crazy as this might sound to you, I'm not saying that I prohibit the sale of a property, but to my mind, especially as a listing agent, I don't want to sell that new listing until I've properly developed the relationship. Plus, I want to give it some time because especially in this environment right now, you know, you don't want to sell it quickly because speed kills, especially for the owner the better the relationship you would have them and the more you afford them at least a few weeks, at least two weeks for as many buyers as you can to have seen it because you want to find that best buyer and leverage that value up. So this provides opportune time for you to leverage off what I refer to as the front end of a listing. So the first thing that we do is we focus on what I call LA Woman. And I'll talk more about LA Woman specifically next week, which is our form of a just listed. I will talk about the mistake that most real estate agents make around LA Woman and why they actually put a just listed out, which gives the game up and they wonder why they're not actually winning sellers. But today, I just want to make the point around the welcome home invitation and making sure that you give yourself three solid goes with any listing that's coming to market to connect with an active property seller. The first is what I refer to as the welcome home invitation. And you wanna make sure that that invitation goes out before the first open for inspection. 
importantly, that invitation needs to state very clearly, I know it by heart so I can recite it. We wanted you, uh, if you're researching the market ahead of selling, we wanted you to feel welcome to attend our open for inspection at number 1735, whatever lane. Once you're there, don't forget to ask our representative for your copy, your free copy of the Property Sellers Research Guide. Now, it's important because this is distributed around that open for inspection a few days before, and it must be the first open for inspection. Why? Can you imagine if you're a seller and you don't receive that invitation till the second or the third open for inspection. Now, it's even worse if you've already been to it and now you're being invited. But if you haven't been to it and you've been aware that it's been open and now you're getting an invitation after knowing fully that that property has been open for a couple of weeks. You see, it's imperative that you have the invitation out before the very first open for inspection. Secondly. That invitation is specific to inviting property sellers actively researching the market ahead of selling. Thirdly, it's offering them something of value. When you get there, don't forget to ask for the property sellers research guide. All of this is conducive because they've been invited on the premise of being a seller and not a buyer and they're being invited to take something from you, when they get there, they're most likely, or the chances of them complying are now increased. Now, of course, you get that invitation out, you get it out on a Thursday. When you do run the open for inspection, I don't have time to run through this one, but you wanna make sure that your open for inspection supersedes, it is better than any of your competitors out there, and it provides, a very distinct experience. We'll get onto that at a later date, but in greeting. So we've sent that invitation out. When they come, when you're greeting these people at the door, the greeting should go pretty much like this. Hi, my name's Mark Dwyer. Yours, they give you your name. Pleased to meet you. And I say, what are we doing today, folks? Buying or selling? Because for sellers, we have the property sellers research guide. Now for a seller, that's irresistible. So their hand goes out, they take it. Now you don't panic, going back to our thing that we talked about earlier today, you've now identified that seller, leave them at the identification process, just put a mark on it, remain calm and move forward. Now, of course, with those that you've identified, you could get back those companies that do have the electronic version of the Property Sellers Research Guide, I'd be sending that out almost straight away. And we've run that identification and you can immediately move them into your service orientation. Now, of course, in regeneration, we come back here, the third hit is on the Monday. Now, I know that it's been a big deal of late. A lot of agents like to actually call people on the same afternoon of them attending an open for inspection i think this is nonsense i get it if you if there's someone in there that was a buyer and they're showing interest of course you'll call those back but where that interest is not really you haven't had any indication that there's a high interest in them buying it i would just discard it altogether and i would call them back on the monday of the new week and then of course the call runs like this it's what i refer to as the assumptive close so I basically say, hi, John, is it? John answers the phone. He says, yes. I say, sorry to bother you. This is Mark from ABC Real Estate. Look, we met an open for inspection at number 19 Lovegate Place on the weekend. I won't ask you about this one, John, because if you liked it, I'm sure you would have told us on the weekend. He goes, yeah. I said, now you guys were selling, weren't you? Now that's an assumptive close. It can only go one or two ways. He can either say, no, what gave you that idea? To which I can just say, oh, well, I'm sorry, I'll just correct my records and move on. He can say, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Or he might even say, 
Oh, very clever. I know what you're up to. You see, assumptive closes for a salesperson are the most powerful thing that you can use because it's not interrogative. And if anything, all you've got to do to run an assumptive close is be dumb. I say dumb is the smartest thing you can do because that person has to correct your naive assumption and nobody gets hurt. I find that if you use an interrogative thing, do you have to sell before you buy? Do you have a property you have to sell before you are able to buy? This is just not received or well received by New Zealanders, in my opinion. I know I'm Australian or Australians. We don't like interrogative style salespeople, but it's subtive types when all you're doing is correcting in an engagement of conversation works a treat. I hope that's given you some good information. I hope that sets you up beautifully if you're participating or involved in any open for inspections this weekend. Get that invitation out. Make sure it's consistent with the greeting that you have at the open home. And then last but not least, by no means least, when you're following up on the Monday, run that assumptive close and watch the conversion work. It's pretty good because in the first month of open for inspections, one in seven people that are walking through that door are actually active property sellers. My name's Mark Dwyer. You can reach me at mark with a K at propertycareers.com.au. Or you can phone me on plus 61410592165. If you're interested in the PC3M program or anything else that we have, please feel free to give me a call. And I look forward to catching you next week on Property Careers Prospector School.